Okay, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be working on a project that I call a name monster project. And I won't show you the final project up first because I want you to really have your own ideas for it. All right, so our first step that we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper and we're going to fold it across the horizontal. So we have our page turned horizontally and then we're going to fold across the horizontal. So I usually do that by taking the bottom of my paper up to meet the top of my paper, make sure it's all lined up, and then I use my finger to press one way and press the other way. So now I have my folded paper. I'm going to open that up and just set it down. So we're going to be using cursive writing for this project. And those of you who are not familiar with cursive writing, uh, I do have some sheets. Obviously with younger students, I'm going to help you with these projects, um, just with the cursive writing part, because that's not the most important part of the project. So these are our cursive letters. There's some that you might want to look at, like the letter Z. So the letter Z is kind of a funny shape. And these handouts that I have, I just got off the internet, and they are, um, they show the, the directions to write your letters in. Now the bottom one on these are what we are going to pretend is our fold of our paper. So we want our name to be on the upper half, so up here. Now sometimes we have letters that have descenders like Q, P, F, G, Y, Z. Okay. All of those have a line that goes below your main line. So I have a couple of letter or a couple of words already written out that I wanted to show you. Sometimes it can be challenging if we have a long name trying to get it to fit. So we're going to draw really lightly until we're happy with the shape. So this is Jennifer and you can see that the lines, the, the descenders here on the J and the F go below the line. If you have a short name like one of my students, Anne, Anne spells his name A-N. And so it's just A-N and then we're trying to stretch it as far as possible. Now I am going to write my own name today. And I'm just going to use uh, a 2B pencil, but a regular HB works fine. This is just closest to my desk. So when I write, I want to write nice and big. My, my name is Erica, so I'm going to do my letters fairly large because that name only has five letters. And the thing about cursive is our letters are continuous. They are a line that keeps going. And every letter is connected. And at the end, I'm going to leave a little bit of an up turn and go back and do my eye. So that is step number one. Step number two, we're going to do a back and forth line all the way along this. The point of this is to make this wider and darker. Now if you had to go and correct, that's what you would have done in the last step before you get to this step. So we're going to go back and forth, and you'll see me, I'll do this fast first. I'm just going to follow the line. In slow motion and up close, that looks like this. Front, forward, backwards, not all the way. Forwards, backwards, not all the way. Forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. Just like that. So I'm just going to quickly do this. I'll go over my line. And this is our second, I guess our third step if you count the um, folding part of our paper. I'm just going back and forth all the way along my line. And notice that it is making it darker as I go. We want to press fairly hard with our pencil, not so hard that we're going to snap our lead, but hard enough that it's going to leave 
lots of that powdery gray graphite on our line. Now this part can get a little smudgy, so just be aware if your hand is all full of uh, graphite, you gotta remember to lift your hand off the paper when you're drawing. So that is that step, the back and forth line. To do our next step, we're going to fold it again. And so you can see my name barely, it's covered up with paper. I'm going to flip it over and this should allow me to see it a little bit better. Of course, it'll be written backwards, but that's okay. So I'm just going to look at it and I'm going to lightly trace and I can do it in sections if I need to. Lightly trace the line. All the way along. There we go. Done. All right. That is the next step. Pretty simple. The next thing that I'm going to need is a ballpoint pen. Now I happen to just have a regular ballpoint pen here. Any kind of ballpoint pen will work. It's just a regular writing pen. Mostly it's so that it encourages us to press hard and also if we do this with pencil lead it'll just kind of get everywhere. So I find it works a little bit better with pen. So this time we're going to do a back and forth or a side to side wiggle line. So I'm going to start on the end here and I'm going to wiggle back and forth over my line. And I'm going to do that all the way. Now I want to make sure that it's really nice and tight together. If I just do this, okay, it won't work what we're trying to do. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to transfer the graphite from our pencil that we did from one side of the paper to the other. It's almost like a stamp. And so it's this pressure that is allowing us to push into the paper. So if I open it up, you'll see that it is transferring over to here. So the powdery gray graphite is creating a line over here. Now it's, if you look up close, it might be missing spots. And that's okay, we'll fix that up in a minute. So you can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do it as quickly as possible here. So as I'm doing this, I'm remembering it's the back of my paper, so if it doesn't look that neat, it's not an issue whatsoever because you won't see any of this on our final piece. So if you have a long name, this might take a little longer. If you have a short name, it might go quicker. I'm just finishing up my capital letter here. All right, it should be good. So if I open it up, there you have it. Our next step is to just finish off by going over it in pencil lightly just to connect any of those missing lines. And then I'm going to choose a marker to go over it. There's actually one step, I guess, before the mark. So now that I have all of my letters connected, I need to do an extra couple of lines. So right now, you can see that there is open space here. Now some people, if your names ended up with a Y, you have no open space. But I do have open space because mine ends up here. So I'm just gonna connect those two lines. And I'm going to connect over on this end somehow. So I can just connect there. Now, this is the cool part. 
So I'm going to take it, and I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to look at it. So I need my marker to go over, and you can use any color. I'm just going to use this black felt tip pen, and I'm going to go over my lines. And this is just to give it an even appearance on both sides. And we have to start thinking creatively about this. And you can either turn it one way or the other. It doesn't matter which direction you turn it in. You could have your uppercase here or you could have them over here. So I'm just going over this. And as I'm tracing, I'm thinking about the shape. And I'm thinking about if any of this looks like it could be part of a body. And I'm going to create a creature. So maybe it's a creature from outer space. Maybe it's just a creature that swims in the deep ocean. Or maybe it's a creature that lives under your bed. Probably not, because that's not a real thing. But we're pretending today. So I'm going to add to this. Now, what I'll probably do is instead of having you sit through all of the next steps, I will just do that on a time lapse. So I hope this was helpful.